Psalm 91 is my, it's one of my scriptures that I just go to when I'm feeling overwhelmed by whatever life brings at that particular time. And at times life can be a little overwhelming. You wake up in the morning and a storm comes and, and you need to find a source, some way to help you make it through this trial and this tribulation called life. And our enemy, Satan, comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And one of the tools he uses is fear. Where would you be if you could get rid of the fears in your life? Because God did not give it to us. Oh, no, no, no. God says, I did not give you the spirit of fear, but power, love, a sound mind. These are options that we have when we face fear. But even in the midst of the oppositions, the setbacks and disappointments, you still can make it through that. Sometimes you just gotta look at something and say, okay, I'm afraid. No excuses, it's just fear. It was working. You see, sometimes it doesn't work in your time frame, or it doesn't feel good, or you run out of money, or people don't seem to be responding the way that you thought they should respond. But a blessing delayed does not mean a blessing denied. Sometimes what you're believing God for just takes a little bit longer. That dream is still alive. Isaiah 41 and verse 13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. As long as you're with God, he says, I will hold you by your right hand, and no harm will come near you. In Psalm 23, yea, though I walk through, I love this, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's good news. We're all going to walk through some dark places and some lonely situations. But it says, though you walk through the valley and the shadow of death, fear what? No evil. Because, he says, I'm with you. When change happens, it's because somebody stood up and said no. Think of Dr. King and Gandhi, Malcolm X, Mother Teresa. They stood up and said no. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is what you do in the presence of fear. You're still afraid, but it's what you do with your fear. Don't let your fear overcome you. Sometimes you have to stand there and face your fear and say in the midst of it, no. The evil done to me, I will not surrender to. And like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, you shall not be moved. How long are we going to allow Satan to make us a slave? Because we don't want to confess our sin before God. He says, if you're faithful and just to confess your sins, he says, I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It's the fear that we have that our sins cannot be forgiven. And the Bible is full of those who have sinned against God and tried to hide their sin. Judas sinned by betraying our Lord and Savior, but his sin overwhelmed him so much that rather than asking for forgiveness and repenting, he went out and killed himself. Peter also denied Jesus, but Peter came back to Jesus and he repented. And we're now reading the book of First and Second Peter in the Bible. I believe that had Judas repented, we would have a book of Judas in the Bible. And I believe that Judas would have a great testimony because it's what God has brought you from is where your testimony comes from. It's the depths that you have gone to that allowed God to come in and pick you up that have made you know that he really is your Lord and your Savior. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, read it with me. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You will not conquer what you're not willing to confront. You will not confront what you cannot identify. In accomplishing God's will in your life, you're going to face your fears. When God wants to use you, you're going to face every weakness and every fear that you have. So what are you going to do? Are you going to not allow yourself to be used to the fullest that God has for you? Or are you going to confront your fear? It's one of the two. Do you face you and deal with you, or ultimately you're going to have to deal with God? You see, we're going to face a judgment. Why didn't you not do what I told you to do? God gave every one of us a plan. You have a hope, you have a future, you have a destiny while you're here. And you're going to face a lot of obstacles as you're overcoming what you need to do in this world. There's an African proverb that says, when there's no enemy within, the enemy's outside cannot hurt you. But deep down, the enemy is in me. And when you find your enemy, 
and you find that place that you need to deal with, you deal with that so that you can go forward and be used by God. God said that you are the top and not the bottom, that you're above and not beneath, that you're the head and not the tail. He says you're a lender and not a borrower. Your enemies will come at you in one way, but they'll flee in seven ways. He said that even you're blessed, your children's children are all blessed because of you. You are a son and daughter of the Most High God. You've got to take a vision of that, and when you get to a difficulty, renew your vision about who you really are. Because we lose sight that we are children of the Most High God. We're the king's kids. We bow to nobody except the king. If he says, I'm rich, then guess what? You are rich. You may not have a dime in your pocket, but you have to walk in the richness and the words of Jesus Christ that says you are wealthy. Believe it. If you're sick, the Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Let the sick say I'm well. Speak those things that are not as though they are. Don't believe in your reality that you see. Believe in what God says in his word. Your reality is a lie. You are what God says you are. You can do what he says you can do. You can have what he says you can have. Do you believe this report or do you believe everything else that the world will ever give you?